Hey Mo, we need to get an intro down for this channel, you know. Yeah, but what are you thinking, Lee? Why don't I rap over the top of it? Don't be ridiculous, you sound like a northern M&M. Look, listen to me. Yo, yo, yo. The munch brunch in the hoose, man. Absolutely not. Right, what you got in mind? Let's just keep it simple. I'm Lee. I'm Aim. They wear the munch brunch. Hi everyone and welcome back to another mukbang with Aim and Lee. We are the Munch Punch UK. Before I even say anything, Go on. this is Lee's idea of heaven, guys. Lee, tell them what we have. We have, guys, 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 giant toad in the hole, which has been cut in half, but you imagine, like, the two-piece, it was massive. You might even see it on the thumbnail, depending on which thumbnail we pop on there. I think we need to use the big one. The first thumbnail. Yeah. It was really good, guys, and yeah. Actually, I've had some of this already in the kitchen. Courtesy of my recipe. Ain's recipe, my energy, and now... Now, this this is the kind of one that would have turned out the first time, but uh, yeah. at least split my... This is going to be really good anyway. It's really tasty. It's cooked through really well, the Yorkshire yeah. pudding. Uh, we've got some gravy. Unfortunately, we ain't got a gravy. Well, we have a Christmas. The minute. It's it's not Christmas, Christmas yet. It's a Christmas one anyway. Oh, there we go. Some gravy, guys. I'd normally have ketchup with Tolden Hall, but I said, no, we're having... Gravy, which to be fair, it does look good. So let's get a bit of that on there. But yeah, I love Yorkshire puddings, guys. If you're not on the poor recipe. Yeah, you can have the rest of that one. So when I'm, well, I suggested it to her and she'd already come up with this recipe from, from our previous video, the roast dinner. Really nice. Uh, with this giant Yorkshire pudding. So I knew we, knew we had the recipe for it. That's like, I love a giant toad in the hall. Line. <clears throat> and there we go. A few days later, toad in the hall. Yeah. Now I've had a little bit different sides to Lee. Oh yeah, because your mash will be in the title. This is Brandon's recipe. Big up Brandon. So it's like carrot, well it's mashed potato with carrot, potato. With potato with grated carrot and cheese. Oh, it's lovely. And I've just got a hell of a load of sweet as well. Mm, that is really good Yorkshire food. The only issue is... I never season my food when I make it. I completely forgot to put the salt and pepper in. You no. are joking. No. So you will need quite a bit of salt and pepper. The one we had the other day that I made was amazing because it had salt and pepper in there. But unfortunately it turned out this big. It was a bit flat because of me. But this has the look without the taste. We'll get there in the end. That's the and I forgot to pick up the pepper when I come up for it. Pick up a pepper. Um, yeah, how are we all doing? It's... It's uh, Sunday. It's Sunday. <laughs> Are you okay, Amo? I'm fine. I'm just going to taste good. this. You'll really like it, I reckon so. You know when you get peckish and you're making food? I've got peckish. I was nibbling on my mash. Had a bit of Yorkshire. Oh, God, I can't mm. wait for this food. Cooked That's through good. well. Yeah. I was going to take it out early because I didn't check the middle. Mm -mm. And I am come through, thankfully, to go to see him. I was like, give him another 20 minutes. <laughs> It's a good job I did. It really wasn't cooked. It looked like it was cooked, but when you actually open it up a little bit, it wasn't mm -mm. cooked in the middle. Mm. And now it is. Yeah. That's nice. It is nice. Um, Let me just turn that on side. So what have we been up to? Guys, it's Sunday. We haven't done so at all. Started decorating. Ready for our tears 18th. Because it's our 18th. We've got people coming around. Claire, Nads, how you doing, loves? So we are talking. just messaging her. Mm. <laughs> So, chances. so we're tightening up the house, ready for people coming around. And plus it needed doing anyway, a little bit, odds and sods. Not a lot, just touch ups. And some sausage in here as well, guys. Yeah, it's real good. Mm. So I was on Twitter before, and just checking out like news and stuff. And I, we, I don't watch um, Dancing with the Stars, that's an American thing. But you'll never guess who is on Dancing with the Stars. I mean, oh, give me a clue. Oh, okay. So... It's a quiz. It's a quiz. We love pop quiz. Okay. Pop quiz. Or whatever they say in that uh, speed. Okay. So if... To get on Dancing with the Stars, all you have to do... You don't have to have any talent at all in terms of dancing. This is your clue. You just have to avoid being killed by a crazy man. Be accused of killing your ex-husband. And feeding him to an animal. And you'll get on Dancing with the Stars. Carol Baskin. Yeah. Carol Baskin is on Dancing with the Stars in America. Later this year. Oh. I mean, literally, she was. She had the 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 Tiger Place way before we watched the documentary, uh, Tiger King. So she was doing all that stuff anyway. All that's happened is she, 
uh, what's his name? What is Joe his? Exotic. Joe Exotic. What are they dead, apparently? And they made a documentary about it? And like, it's kind of backfired, though, isn't it? Why? Oh, because he went to prison and whatnot. Well, everyone reckons she killed her ex-husband, but well, they don't have any evidence because it's in the tiger. Hmm. Um, it's one way to do it. Yeah. I mean, Anne could try and kill me, but I don't think our dogs would like the taste. I'm a bit too uh, chewy for our dogs. Milo wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> no, he's a dippy sorry, just like... Who else? Oh, Nelly. Nelly's gone in, Carol Baskin. And I do not know anyone else. It's like when they do the UK one. You'll get like two people you know and about 15 people I know, I think it's know. a little bit different here. You do kind of know them, but it's more like... We do, a... like if an American was to watch it, they'd have no idea who the English oh. ones were. Yeah, but it's like Big Brother, isn't it? They, they put like... Sheila has been on. Yeah, Sheila walked into Morrison's and a box fell on her head. Get in Big Brother house. That's all they do mm-hmm. these days. Well, that's so good. Oh no, it's really cooked well. I made two of these because obviously we've had one and we split them between uh, Anne's mum and Tia. But I knew Bren wouldn't eat a, a half of one, so I cut a bit off Bren's. That's why I had to taste it to make sure it's cooked right. My mum went. I won't, I won't eat later on now. Yeah. I looked at it because she really does eat small portions. I saw the pie, like, oh my god, that's going to feed her for a month. Mm-hmm. But you put a box of cakes in front of that's it. You won't see them for dust. If you had actually seen it the other day, did you see what David Blind's been up to lately? No. Mm. So, David Blind, a few days ago, travelled across the. What flipping desert is it now? Is it hard? No, uh, the one in America. It's not like a proper desert, is it? It's... I don't even know, I've not got my phone on me. I knew I'd regret doing this. Anyway, he travelled across an area of land, a wide area, and it is something desert in America. Arizona? Um, might be in Arizona, I, I don't know. Either way. I don't know if Arizona's a, has a desert. <laughs> no, it's not. It's I don't know what I'm on about. He travelled over somewhere anyway. Quite a long distance, but... Us two, if we had to go from A to B and it was like a distance, you go by car, by train, by plane, something like that. By boat, maybe, a push, as long as there's no sharks around. You need to go by animal. David Blaine travelled from A to B, and it wasn't like from here to the corner shop blower there or whatever, but holding on to helium balloons. I am, I am joking, guys. He was holding on to some helium balloons and travelled from a long way. That's so much fun. you imagine? That's so stupid now. You can just imagine he was a kid, the one who's a kid, his mum said, David, put the chainsaw down. Someone will get hurt in a minute. Yeah, you just imagine he's a right little shit. Look what he does, Sam. But why do we need him to do all that? Why can't we just go back to the old days of Paul Daniels, put out a pack of magic cards with Debbie McGee and... <laughs> Nobody in America's going to know if he's a surely. Trust me. Check him out, De- Debbie McGee and Paul Daniels, and they pull a rabbit out of a nap. Okay, admittedly the rabbit was sat there the whole time. She sort of reminds me of my auntie. We sat all the time. Again. Maybe she's your auntie. Maybe she's just pulling a magic trick. This is a lot of Yorkshire pudding, isn't it? It's amazing. What is that? Why does he feel the need to show off? Oh yeah, oh no, I'll do next. I'll travel across the desert holding onto a balloon. I hope a pigeon comes on and pops it, as long as he's got a parachute on. So you wouldn't like to be David Blaine then? No, I wouldn't want to be David Buddy Blaine. Locking myself in a box in the sky for like a, a month or whatever it was just to say I did it. What's the point? Mm. Oh, look at Pete now. There he's having another hot dog. He had an hot dog yesterday as well and the day before. You wouldn't mind if he's, the money he's on. Well, he might be on good money. You need to be to take them sort of chances. I want to be his insurance company. What are you doing this time then, Dave? <laughs> oh, I'm, tra- I'm travelling via balloon about 800 miles. Yeah, we can't insure you for that, Dave, because if a pigeon does accidentally pop your balloon, you're going to die. It's going to cost us a lot of money. It's good, though, and you've got to be honest. I'll tell you what I, I, I like. Devin Brown. Yeah, it's it is brilliant. good. Mm. His trick of the mind has actually worked on me, though, in the past. Yeah, you go along with it. Well, no, I really concentrate. You've got to be really open-minded. Not me though. I did the one where it was like you won't be able to move off your seat, and I couldn't move. I was like, it's only trick of the mind. But I was like, what the heck? 
and he, and he knew like another one where he was going to choose these items on the screen and I'd show us exactly this. I couldn't believe it. I'm one of the ones where I had to explain to me a fair few times. So I'm like, look, it isn't going to work. It doesn't work. It didn't work on me. It was like, it's not meant to work on everyone. Well, hang on, what's he doing a buddy docket a show about him for? No, they look, listen, this is how it works. And then Graham would explain it to me. you got to open your mind up. What, what it's for? not just like that. Lee, like, tries to say, magic isn't real, but it isn't about magic, it's about manipulation. And that's all it is, it's mind control. It's nothing to do with magic. There is no magic that Darren Brown does. It's just my manipulation, and, and everybody can succeed with that if you know what you're doing. Well, I couldn't manipulate someone's mind into thinking that there was like an animal and making make them bark. It's quite clever That's how they do hypnotism. it. Mm hypnotism. -hmm. I don't believe in that crap either. Hypnotism, um, mystic peg, no. That's me, that's psychic stuff. Mm hmm, no, no. But I mean, the fact that that lady, she made a real good career for herself just out of talking crap. And this was before the internet was a big thing, so we couldn't you write... You read it the paper. Yeah. Back then, we couldn't turn around and say, hang on, Mystic Meg, what are you on about? You're talking shite, because this is what it says on the internet. You're saying this is going to happen next week. Well, I've just checked the forecast the next 10 days. So when you say it's going to rain next Thursday, actually the BBC weather says it's going to be bloody hot. No, but... You can't put Darren Brown in the same category as Mystic Meg. No, but I'm saying she got herself a good career out of talking crap. We can all do that. I mean, you well, it ain't really a career, but we talk crap. But it is good. And I, I love that. No, I like thing. the Darren Brown ones. I watched them a fair few times before I got sat down and said, alright, let's give it a go. And then you I love like, it now, don't you? Yeah. There's one, I think, where... I'm sure I've got this right. He convinced somebody to go and shoot. It was stage. Shoot yourself, Warwick. No, shoot someone else. And then, oh, like, there's one where like, he convinced somebody to jump in front of a bullet for a complete stranger, I mm. think it was. Like, it's just like, you're going to hear this sound. And, like, they don't even know they're going to hear it. Like, as in, it's just a, like the back of their memory, isn't it? Or however they do it. It's in your subconscious mind. It, it could be something like that. Or, and then, it just... it just mm. You've got to be amazing to be able to do this, like... Darren Brown. <laughs> yeah. But my manipulation is a powerful thing. It could get you into serious. Oh, yeah, Jeffrey. Dave, give me your bank card whilst you're asleep. And then <laughs> Dave does it, and then you're, you're very rich, aren't you? As long as Dave's got some money in the bank. Imagine doing it to somebody who ain't got any money in there. And you're like, Christ, I spent four weeks brain training this guy, and he's poor. I should have looked into that first. The, I like it because the Darren Brown ones is basically they do it where he will you apply for it basically like the ones I've seen anyway you apply on like through his website over yes I want to I've like my brain fucked with uh, mm. and then he'll he won't, they won't get back to you they'll say oh thank you for the application or something like that and then they randomly they'll pick you out you don't know you've been picked and just like you'll go into work and something happens and it's them already they film it it's already it, started the show hasn't yeah. it you're just going about your daily routine for a couple of weeks and little things are triggering in your brain yeah he's already done it it's really he's brilliant he's, he's an actual genius mm -hmm. and he's got like this little thing he does like sort of like a it's like a tick or something he sort of goes a lot doesn't it oh, it's really strange so it's how it's part of his thing mm -hmm. I do think you've got to have like something, not wrong with you, but you've got to have like something happen in your life to become like he is. You know, it's not like Eddie wakes up on a Sunday morning and decides to be Darren Brown, is it? A lot of training. I think it's amazing. I love illusionists, all that vision. I think it's some of the illusions that these famous ones do. Yeah. And mind blowing, you're like, there's this thing that me and Lee wanted to go and see. And I said, like, a lot of celebrities have gone to see it. Oh, yeah. And it's like, it's, I can't even explain. It's like this event that goes around, like, theatres. And it's meant to be, like, the scariest thing you will ever see. And it messes with, you, with your mind that much. Like, some people have become ill, haven't they, I mm -hmm. think? Like a, a live horror show. Like a live theatre show. But, so you're part of the theatre show. 
it's not like going to watch <clears throat> Nightmare on Elf film, not that kind of thing on stage. It's like my manipulation again. It, it's mm. me it's meant to be a brilliant, and we just missed out by a few days. Yeah, we missed it. Well, you no, it wasn't. Was it yeah. You don't really want to go to that. No, no. Well, we missed it. By the time you knew about it, showed mm. me we'd missed it. I think I've ended it on like the Thursday. It'd been on the Tuesday. Tomorrow. No, no. It was on on the Saturday, but there was only like one ticket. Should have gone on. See what happened. Are you mad? No, stuff like that would freak me out. Like just sitting there in your chair. Like, oh, bloody hell, there's Dirty Den over there just feeling himself up in the chair when no one's looking. Why don't you just say for once, John, James, no, Steve. Dirty Dennis. Anyways, and there you are. I think, oh, it's all right, leave him to it. Not He's in. No, he's no danger to us. No danger to me and I, him and Bren. And then all of a sudden, someone jumps on your back. Because that's the sort of thing that happens. They actually jump out at you. They grab you. Things touch your feet. No, thank <laughs> you. No. I think it'd be fun, but no. I don't even think that one is like that. I think what it is, from the beginning, you, you're asked to view things, to watch things, and you don't know you're actually taking it in, but you do. And then later on down the, the line, kind of messes with your head, something mm. happens, like you like Lisa, it triggers something off from somewhere else. Well, here's something I definitely look at, the one you're in about, yeah, the horror show thing. Uh, if it comes, because I'm sure it'll come back from touring again. A lot of rich, famous people have gone to it and Yeah, really good. like, um, him out of um, oh, what's it called there? <laughs> no, no. That Could program, that little one. He was in Fargo. That little one. Oh my god. Matthew. <laughs> no. In Fargo. The film Fargo. When he was in that one, he's an English bloke. He did like an English horror. And he was in um, oh that twenty. Four days before, you know, twi I don't even know you're in about that. Oh, I'm going to have to look now. She's going to look now, but this could take a while, though. No, it won't. It won't, okay. But my point originally, guys, was about the David Blaine thing. We was talking about this in our last video we recorded. It might be the last video you've seen, but one we recorded recently about rich people. And just doing stupid things because you can. Why can you do it? Because you're rich. And that's what brings back to David Blaine. Him, Martin Freeman. Oh, Martin Freeman. Uh, yeah, he was in Fargo, well done, uh, yeah, in the TV show. Yeah, he went and he was outside the theatre in London and he come out and he was there with his like, kids, but there was grown-ups sort of thing. And he was like, that is probably one of the most scariest things I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we saw the trial, so it did look good. Yeah. I really want to go. I said, uh, being rich makes you think stupid shit because... You can't tell me anyone who didn't have the sort of money David Blaine had would take a chance of travelling. Where the hell's that desert? Yeah, I'll put your phone up, man, because I've looked like an idiot and I'll tell you where it is, guys. I'll type in, you don't have to, um, you can't do that. Just type in David Blaine balloons, it'll tell you. But only a rich person would think about doing that. Oh, but I've got everything I need. I've got 5,000 pairs of trainers. I've got a collection of spoons. Yeah, I've got all the Disney films. Arizona, is it? Was it? Yeah. All right. Well done, I'm out. It's right twice. That is all right, you know, later. You guessed I'm about it being Arizona. You didn't actually know, so I'm saying well done. Yeah, you got it right. Mm -hmm. The Arizona desert, I guess they call it. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be the one. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's got all everything he wants, and he still needs to push himself. Like, yeah, now, now I'm going to travel across the Arizona desert. Uh, with balloons. Because that's his lot. That's what his career is. That's what he needs to do. He does actually order. need to do that, does he? I mean, you know, like anyone who we know would not do that because he couldn't afford to. You've got to have money to be able to. Now, can I just say, some people who have earned money through doing things like that, it's just the passion. It isn't about the money. It's about the the passion to, you know. Uh, enthrall people in something you're talented at doing, such as like a famous singer. You have to have passion in singing <clears throat> to continue to do it. It's not about the money. Mm -hmm. Beyonce could retire tomorrow. She's actually set up for the life for a, the rest of her life, and the kids would. But she wants to do that. She's got the passion for it. Entrepreneurs who like to do like property development. And I don't mean just like round it. I mean like 
you know, big time money. Um, like, you know, like I was on about the other day in that other video, like the billionaire cruise ship people yeah. who have earned the money through investment. That's not a passion, that's just a good, that's a good, um, what would you call it? It's not a talent, investment. it's just a, an investment in something, a good investor. It's not actually a talent as such. They know the money, they know the financial, you know, status mm. of things, but you'll find that people like David Blaine want to do it even because they've got so much passion for the subject that they're yeah, doing, you know? I got you. But I've not taught the people over the years. Probably some of you have not, for one reason or another, whether it's, the, whatever. You probably, I probably have upset a few people. But I've always not taught like a lot of music artists and stuff like that. No, it's going back to it, I'm not about being rich. Well, this is Miley Cyrus interview with Joe Rogan the other day. Um, that's how we got on to talk about being rich, me and I'm about what she was doing for her dad's birthday. I love that conversation. Yeah, we'll go back to that. We was meant to do it today, guys. We were literally rushed off our feet, so we'll get into being rich and what money what and stuff on another video next time. Anyway, it's Miley Cyrus though. She's like, since she was like 12 or 13, been touring because like she was doing a Hannah Montana concerts and stuff. And she said in this interview, she used to get up do a school work in the morning with a, a tr teacher who travel around her. Go from every seven days a week without fail, playing concerts for like two or three years. Sorry guys, and that was her life. Like every, she had, didn't know any kids. She had a younger sister who's like seven years younger and a younger brother who's a few years younger, and that was it. It was just a mum and nan, a brother and sister. Her dad was at home, whatever. He didn't want to do all this sort of travelling and stuff. Uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, and that was the life she had. And we knock off, but I, I can't imagine at thirteen or twelve. Literally, she's never had. She said a, a family holiday. Now, bear in mind how rich Hannah Montana is. Like, oh, Billy, not Billy, Miley, right? Miley Cyrus. Like the girls worth millions upon millions. Maybe probably not billions, but hundreds of millions. Never once had a family holiday as a kid with a family. The one time they tried it, they went to the beach once in a whole life as a family. And a brother did shut a door or something on a towel. They ended up up the hospital. And the mum and dad said, no, never happening again. Didn't go to the beach as a family. Didn't go on holiday as a family. Watch in now. And then the sad part is her mum, I mean, obviously the Klaus, her mum and her, she's living off her daughter. If our tea could have been playing concerts at 12 years old, I'd have had her up there. Damn right, here. Why not, would you? We'd be millionaires by now. No, I would have <clears throat> made sure... I think the thing is you got to think like that is, you know when you get like child superstars and you're the parents, I'd want them to have a normal, like a happy equilibrium so to speak, like a normal life to the degree that they can, like yeah. and, and enjoy each other's company, like family time. But how many famous kid, rich kids, like, it doesn't really happen in the UK too much, but other than with sports people, uh, rich American kids usually ain't it. Just go off the rails. Give name two and I'll name two. That have gone off the rails? Yeah. Rich American kids. Okay. Michael Jackson. Oh, he yeah. He was a yeah, child Charles. superstar. Went off the rails. Macaulay Culkin. He went off the rails for a lot of years. That's two straff off the top of my head. I don't know. I think Alec Baldwin's a bit bloody on the verge, eh? Alec Baldwin. Was he a child superstar then? Alec no, Baldwin? What's wrong with Alec Baldwin? The whole Baldwin family. Oh, Stephen Baldwin, he, he went a bit loopy, yeah. No, and Alec did. I don't know. But there's just a lot of them, just kids like this, they can't handle it. Uh, you know, Britney Spears shaved her bloody hair for Christ's sake. What is this this whole thing with her parents at the mini? Oh, I've not heard um, about that. So they're still responsible for her or some or other and they've got to sign this know. out. I don't know what's going on with that one. Well, we should have looked into it for bringing up really. Well, I didn't know you was going to bring this sort of no, thing. No, I was just saying like, as good as it is to have kids who are like prodigies as they call them, child prodigies and amazing and stuff, it can go to their heads. And, you know, like, um, Miley Cyrus, for example, she went off the rails. She was saying from like 16, 17, she was doing drugs like all the time. From, from weed she to... She is slightly strange now, is Miley Cyrus in real life. Like, I think she's settled down now, but she was a little bit, <clears throat> you know. Mm -hmm. And who else? Macaulay Culkin, it's a shame, isn't he? Yeah. Like, you know. I mean, you're all shouting names out now. Probably what about, screen. like, not necessarily a child star, but 
you get guys like Philip Seymour Hoffman, dead. Mm-hmm. Um, Heath Ledger, dead. And you think, <coughs> you got all this money, all this status, and yet you have to shoot up. It's just, I mean, I know Heath was on... He was painkillers, weren't he? Yeah, I think. but like... I think they call it like a lot of them, ben, Benzo. Yeah, Benzo. Um, you know. I've heard of it. Marilyn but, Monroe, that's yeah. how she died. Well, Benzo. you can't blame her for being in a bad place. I've heard about her. Obviously, we've all heard about Marilyn Monroe, but there's a famous story I've heard. Uh, Joey Diaz, is a comedian in America, told this story, because he'd read about it or whatever, or knew about it. And between... Didn't they go with Elvis? Between JFK and every, <laughs> every other famous person in America at that time... Because female actresses weren't really respected back then. And Marilyn Monroe was like the top of the pile. She was just passed around, apparently, between everyone. Oh, no. Like, literally, she was just told, right, you're God's Jeff K's house, like the White House, whatever. Then he'd say, okay, now you've got to go on. He won, I'd say. But literally, she just went around all the famous people. Not by choice. A management or whatever, just sold Status thing, isn't it? Yeah. Mean? Okay, now tonight you're going to be with Elvis. I don't know, it's just a guest. It might not have been Elvis. Tomorrow you're going to be with Santo and all famous actors all slept with her. And by the end, she was just done in. That's why she did, took the drugs and got into her right mess with it. But that particular drug, a lot of them is, is what they take when, unfortunately, something bad happens, like the respiratory system completely fails and things. It's just... It's like um, super morphine, if you will. Like, it completely relaxes you to the point like, whoa. Mm. And sometimes you just don't wake up. The sad one was Prince. I mean, not a massive Prince fan. I like a few of his songs. But he had a really bad hip. He used to do the splits all the time. We started watching that RuPaul's Drag Race. I love that. Mm. And she was on about it, Miles. So that's how I heard about it. And then Joe Rob was like, oh, I'm going to watch it. I thought we'll give it a go. Which they do these things called death drops. Where basically it's like from a standing position, they jump up, I think, and then do the splits as they land. And that's called a death drop, I guess, because you can pretty much kill yourself for it. But what's his name used to do? Uh, Prince used to do him on stage. I know, I've seen these videos. And it, it caused his hips to cause him a lot of pain. Well, if you think about that impact, it doesn't matter how thin he was, that impact on that floor is going to be quite hard, isn't mm-hmm. it, really? On your joints. Your joints are meant to have that happen to him. So one night, and he was on painkillers for a lot of years, and it was all right, he was managing it with the painkillers from the doctors and his prescriptions. He ran out of painkillers. He went outside of his, a concert, walked outside, so to the nearest bloke who's obviously selling drugs, mate, have you got anything? you got some drugs? I need something for the pain before I go on stage. They give him something, killed him right away. Just there and then, killed him. Who? Mm. What do you have? No, where have you heard that? Um, that's a true story. That's how Prince died in his, in his bloody He died of drugs. Yeah, in with his drugs. In his house? In, with drugs on him, man. Yeah, but he wasn't outside a concert. He hall. went outside and got the drugs off the bloke, and the bloke's drugs killed him. Oh, yeah, but I thought you meant you no, did a concert. Like, no, he was at a concert. He did the con- He went. He needed drugs to get through his concert, and later that night must have been. And he killed yeah, him. Yeah, he, he died in his lift in his house. I didn't know where he died. I just knew that's what killed him was the drugs off this bloke. You in there? See, I was putting him. No, you can have it. I, that, it's a little bit too heavy, isn't it? Really? Not really. It's quite light. <laughs> Sorry, peeps. I do like this though. We can say goodbye if you had enough. I'll keep eating. Don't worry about me. Lee, do you really need that tiny little extra bit there? It's like you were steak. Yeah, fair play. I'll get your point. Yeah. Mm. But, um, you know, not going, because I want to do another video about that money thing. But just like saying, it goes to show, doesn't it? You can have all that money. And sometimes they still need, like, these drugs to keep it going. Mm. Look at Amy Winehouse. Robin Williams. Did yeah, but he, he did have something. Like, there was something. I think it was like a rare form of um, autism. Not autism. Was it Parkinson's or was it? Um, I don't know. What's the one where you lose your memory? Oh, um, dementia. Yeah, but the other. Uh, Parkin. I don't know. Eh? I'm not. Alzheimer's. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Um, That's a shame. But we lose them all. Eventually, they all go. I mean, the the one that I'm. I don't know anyone famous. I, could have I know exactly what you're going to say. 
Okay, well, we'll say it at the same time in a second when I get to it. But well, there's one person who I follow for a lot of years now. My dad got me into this person when I was a kid. And when he goes, it's actually be really sad. There's two people, but one of them is British. Now. After three. One, two, three. Billy David C- Jason. <laughs> no. Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly for me. But oh. David Jason for me. Yeah, David Jason as well. It is sad to see him ageing. If you look at back when we watch him on All the and Horses to now when you see him, and he looks so much older. <clears throat> yeah, no, Billy Connolly as well. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. 100%. That would be. Well, I don't know him, but it'd just be really sad. Yeah, but the thing is, like, you, we've grown up with him as, like, mm-hmm. and, like over here in the UK. Billy Connolly is one of the most. Yeah, well, he lives in the He was an influential um, comedian, wasn't he, to a lot of other people. And he's won, like, Lifetime Achievement Awards and right, things. So, yeah. Same as David Jason, who plays Del Trosher in. Um, Old Fields and Horses, I love that program. And obviously, you, you see these people as you're growing up. It's not as though you know them, but you feel like you've had some sort of connection with them mm. because at family times on a Saturday, you'd watch something like that together. And it's a bit like Bruce Forsyth, like yeah. he when he died, a guy over here he used to do like presenting and stuff. It's weird because you think. You grew up with somebody, and, and I think a lot in life with your own family, you kind of take people for granted, didn't you? Yeah, you do that. You kind of think, no, actually, yo, oh, that's all right, because the you're always going to be there. there, and it's not the case, is no. it? I mean, it was a show, because with David Jason, we often watch old Only Fools and Horses. I mean, bear in mind they were made in the 80s, probably before we were born, some of them, and we'll sit here and laugh at them, and you look watching it, and then you think, oh, it's David Jason, it's Del Trot or whatever. He looks just like he did when watching 20 years ago, so you forget completely. When he made that, you're talking best part of nearly 40 years ago, about 35 years ago. You kind of expect him to still be down the market, don't you? Yeah. And you don't really... And, that, and that's something else I find really, like, upsetting. You know when you... um, You know when you watch a show, and I was only talking to you about this before. Yeah, was, well. Like, a film. At the moment, I'm watching uh, Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2. And I, I watch these quite a lot, the Twilight films, because they're just a feel-good thing for me. But I get so enthralled in a film or a programme that I get upset when it's finished, or I get upset that it's not a real, true story. Like, you actually want one of the dogs, don't you, as a pet? Yeah, I do. I'd love one. Like, you know, but the fact of it is, like, you, live in, you can live in this fantasy world, and it's not real. But you want it to be real, if you know what I mean. And... It, and also, like, when it comes to people, you sometimes you want these characters to be real. And when you kind of think of Del, you, yeah, you want him to be him, but mm. then you know him as David Jason, who actually... It always gets me when you see a character and they talk a certain accent, but then when they're, intru- like, what do you call it, interviewed in real life, and they've got another voice, a bit like Nessa out of Gavin and Stacey. Yeah. She's quite posh, and it kind of ruins it for me. It's just one of them things, Bob. You just get very in depth with things like that. You get very. I invest in, in everything like that. Like my emotions get invested into the things that I really don't. No, it's mean. a shame. I think that just comes back to your childhood. Because hey, my way, you used to watch. Like I never did this. I, I said this to Artie the other day. If I've watched a, as an adult, if I've watched a film twice, then it's very rare. It's more than one film. I watch maybe two <laughs> films twice, like over and over. If you know what I mean. Aim as a kid. Would get in a film, like, I don't know what film it was, was it? Oh, Cinderella and Cinderella and, and stuff. You'd watch it every day. Yeah. I mean, it's like an addiction thing, like Miley Cyrus said. If there's not <coughs> any, if they're a new episode of the RuPaul's Drag Race, even if it's three weeks in between, she'll watch the same episode every day until the new one comes on. It's like I've got such a like, OCD issue. Like, I, I wish I didn't. I'm the same with people. Like... I get invested in, not strangers or friends, I mean like family. Like I really kind of obsessed on, on the health and mm-hmm. on, and, and it could be anything, films. Like if I haven't picked up a book for a long time and then I pick it up, I'll finish, I'll finish the book. You did the other night, you couldn't sleep, you had 150 pages for the night. But you know, I just sat there and was like, right, sod this, I'm going to finish the damn book. And I, and I do that, and like when I collect stuff, like, if I start collecting things, I get this impulse down, and I'm like, yeah, yes, I want to buy a couple of hundred pounds worth of the stuff. You certainly do, bro. It does my eddy. I'm just a bit sad today, guys, so it's nice to see a bit cheerier now. 
<laughs> Don't know what was wrong with her. We'll have a chat later on. I ain't been down with you before. Sounds like love. Just does that, doesn't he? Yeah. Anyway, guys, let us know what one thing in life you are addicted to. I don't mean drugs and cigarettes and booze. I said something in your life you really love to the point where you just got to keep doing it or buying it. Like a guilty pleasure type of thing. Yeah, what's your collection? What do you like to collect? Me, my gran collected magnets for a long time. Uh, and she had like a dog. I mean, in her 60s, she got a doll's house. When I was a kid, this was when my gran was in her 60s. She spent hundreds on this thing. I ain't kidding you, it's at my gran's now. It's, if you like doll's houses, it's amazing. I didn't, but I had to go around and show, oh, lady, look, I bought this little teapot. It's like that big. How much grand? I was like a kid. Oh, he's only thirty pound. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, okay, only thirty quid. Could have bought me a game, none for me Xbox or whatever. Yeah, but Lee must have spent hundreds and hundreds of pounds on DVDs at one point. But then I've completely just switched off from it. Like I used to be money obsessed, like other people are. Like, oh, I gotta buy this, gotta buy, I gotta buy. Oh, whatever, don't need it, so I don't bother with it anymore. Don't have any anything. I'm. A, no, I don't collect anything now. Just. Um, Nope, not collect anything. No, like, there's certain apps and things about with films. Oh, yeah. You yeah. don't bother buying the DVDs, do At you? all. I've probably bought maybe three DVDs in the last, like, five years. Whereas before, it was, like, three DVDs in a couple of days. We used to go to Blockbuster on a Saturday. And we'd go in, and that was, like, if you weren't going out, we'd go, oh, yeah, do you want to watch, like, a film on Saturday evening? And then he'd go into Blockbuster, and it's been, like, I don't know, 20, 30 quid. That's nothing, I'm bloody hell. I yeah, but see, X and so not eighty quid. Yeah, but this was like when DVDs wasn't accessible like that. Mm-hmm. This is like eighteen ninety nine for like the Avengers or whatever you might just hypothetically. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> it's all changed now. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Yes, I hope you've enjoyed this. Our amazing, huge toad in the hole that was just too huge. Too he, huge. He for got through it. I imagine. You know why I'm probably didn't finish hers? Because we got some Freya Rocha yesterday from Mal Super <laughs> Mal. Mm-hmm. And I knew that we were out of between to the dinty, so she cracked her open the Ferrero Rocher and made a bit of a dent in it. Yeah, I do like Ferrero Rocher. Oh, there was four gone before, now there's five gone. D- no word of a lie. <sighs> That's my thing, it's yeah. Ferrero Rocher. But they probably filled you up so you eat your bloody veg, Oh, I'm not throwing that sweet away. All right then. Anyway, guys, thank you again for watching. Yeah. It's quite late. We didn't get recorded until half six, so we are rushing a little bit now, I'm afraid. So remember to be kind, remember to be nice, comment, share, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you again. Hit us with the thumbs up and down below in the comments. Later. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye.